NVIDIA today announced its new RTX 4080 and RTX 4090 GPUs. They're priced at $900 at the lowest end, $1,600 at the highest end. There's a middle step as well. And the company also announced DLSS 3, which is actually a pretty major talking point this time around. It's not just a revision. They're doing a lot more with it. Now, of course, we'll test it independently, see if it's any good once it comes out. But it's something you should be aware of because uh, the moves they're making here are exiting sort of just ray tracing is cool territory and entering this might actually affect the wider industry um, so in addition to that nvidia focused its announcement today on supporting modders for example talking about omniverse which is its software suite and also talked about metaverse marketing bs but we'll skip that part before that, this video is brought to you by Fractal and the Pop Air Cases. The Fractal Pop did well in our recent review, performing admirably thermally while also offering unique color variations for the chassis body. The Fractal Pop Air is a relatively compact mid-tower while still offering ease of installation features, and it even has optional 5 and a quarter inch mounts for those who still use front panel hardware, like optical drives. Learn more at the link in the description below. We'll get you straight into it as we always do with this stuff. Uh, they dove into Metaverse marketing land after about 20 minutes, but up until that point, it was a pretty good keynote as far as keynotes go. Fairly packed with technical information and the cards. So starting with the 4090, the specs, the RTX 4090 is priced at $1,600 and NVIDIA says it launches on October 12th. It says that it will run two times faster in Microsoft Flight Sim than the RTX 3090 Ti. That is obviously a massive jump in performance and uh, the pricing, the value determination, that'll be a little more difficult. We're gonna have to wait till we can actually review it and use our own data to make a, a judgment on the value of the card. But they're claiming two times faster in Flight Sim, three times faster in Portal RTX, which is a new portal rehash rendered with RTX. And uh, they claim four times faster in Racer X, which is another basically right now tech demo that NVIDIA was showing that maybe it'll become a relevant game, but at the moment, it's more or less the Star Wars tech demo they did previously. So those are the claims. Um, Microsoft Flight Sim gives the best example of sort of normal performance for normal gaming that we'd all be used to. Now, a two times increase in performance at $1,600 versus the previously $1,900 to $2,000 plus dollar 3090 Ti definitely makes 3090 Ti buyers feel bad. But we'll need more test data to talk about the true value again. And also, it's been a really screwy market where NVIDIA's prices got slashed almost in half over the last couple months. And so if you're looking at the uh, original MSRP to the MSRP of the new stuff, as opposed to the most recent price, the MSRP of the new stuff, those will give different answers as to if the value is good and if there's been actual improvement generationally. And we'll look at both of those angles in our reviews. We're gonna come back in a moment to more specs comparisons of these GPUs. But for the next one, the pricing of the RTX 4080 is variable because there's two versions. So there's a 12 gigabyte model and then there's a 16 gigabyte model. All of this is GDDR6X for the memory selection that NVIDIA is using this time around. And the 12 gigabyte model is priced at $900. 16 is $1,200. That is starting MSRP. Obviously, partners will scale on top of that. NVIDIA didn't give as much for performance details on this one. It did note a 3x performance increase in Racer X. Means absolutely nothing to us. That holds zero value right now. We have no idea what that means. It's not really a title that people can actually test especially not with 40 series cards. So uh, not super useful, but that's kind of the job function we serve once it comes out. As for dates, NVIDIA didn't explicitly announce the date for the RTX 4080 options, but they did say on the website sometime in November. And as a keynote here, AMD is announcing its RDNA 3 GPUs on November 3rd as one final shot across the bow before NVIDIA started its presentation. It announced that this morning, two hours before NVIDIA went live. So taking a little bit of, of shots there and trying to take some attention away from NVIDIA, which is all good. I mean, that's how these companies should work. So, uh, all right, specs. NVIDIA did not get into the specs in its presentation today in the keynote, but we were able to get them. These are the official specifications we're gonna go over. First of all, remember that the cores and the architecture are different in Ada Lovelace GPUs. That's RTX 40 series. You're gonna hear Ada a lot. That is the shorthand for the architecture or generational name of the RTX 40 cards. It means the same thing. It's like Ampere for the 30 series, Turing for the 20 series. They use scientist names if you're new here and you didn't know that. Um, Pascal previously before the 20 series. So for the A to GPU core, as with every generational improvement, there are 
differences architecturally, that mean it's not a simple one-to-one -one comparison. There's not a linear increase in performance as the CUDA core count goes up. So if you see 16,000 with one generation versus whatever, 10,000 with the previous generation, it's not just as simple as, well, 6,000 more, therefore 6,000 units better out of the total. Uh, so just want to make that really clear. Now, for the specs here, the RTX 4090 has 16,384 CUDA cores. This is directly comparable to the other RTX 40 cards. So the 4080 has 9,728, and the 4080 12 gigabyte has 7,680. This is really important. We're going to come back to this point in a second. NVIDIA noted verbally that it has hit upwards of 3,000 megahertz in its lab. It did not specify the conditions. We would assume overclocking or XOC, but they didn't clarify. Now, as for the clocks that are shipping, the RTX 4090 base clock is marked as 2230 megahertz, with boost marked as 2520 megahertz. This will vary partner to partner, of course. The partner models like MSI, Gigabyte, ASUS, not EVGA, uh, will be able to boost higher for a higher stock clock like always. The 4080 16 gigabyte card runs at 20 to 10 megahertz base, not much of a change here, and about the same boost at 2510. The 4080 12 gigabyte, this is important once again, runs higher at 2610 megahertz boost and 2310 megahertz base. It's actually really normal to see the clocks run higher on cards that are more cut down or slimmed down versions of a GPU because they have more boosting headroom to do so. Think of it at least thermally, ignoring everything else like power and density of everything, uh, at least thermally, you're sort of reducing the density there, the thermal density, especially on these cards where boost, uh, whatever version they're on now, 3.0 most recently, as boost scales with the temperature gradient, you have more room to increase the speeds, even if the core count is lower. Now, the memory interface runs 384 bits wide on the 24 gigabyte equipped RTX 4090. It's 256 bits wide on the 16 gigabyte 4080, and it's 192 bits wide on the 12 gigabyte 4080. The lower end 4080 becomes more memory bandwidth constrained than the others, so it'll be a key test point for gaming use cases. Now, of no otherwise, NVIDIA got rid of NVLink and SLI. They are not on these boards. It's listed in the specs list as not available, and I've seen 4090s in person. Uh, it's not that technically we're not under NDA for those. Um, that was before NVIDIA announced them, and those did not have NVLink bridges on them. So we know that's not going to be a thing, or the, the, they're called NVLink fingers for the bridge. So that's dead at this point, at least on consumer parts. Maybe still on server or something. NVIDIA has officially moved on from SLI now, though unless they do like a 4090 Ti with it or something. Now the power spec is interesting. So this was in the rumors a lot. It is 450 watts for the 4090. Partner models will have room to modify vBIOS and go higher if they want. It's not uncommon to see a 50 watt increase on 450. So you may see something like Asus or MSI high-end boards going up to say 500 watts, but we don't know. NVIDIA tends to impose a limit for how high they're allowing the partner to go. The higher the power budget, the higher the clocks can boost. And that's beneficial for things like overclocking and for enthusiasts. But the uh, power efficiency goes way out the window as you start exiting normally the base spec for it, uh, which makes sense because it doesn't scale linearly with power. So the 4090 then 450 watts, it's 320 watts on the RTX 4080 16 gigabyte, and critically 285 watts on the 4080 12 gigabyte. Power connector requirements for the Founders Edition models that were announced, not the partner models, uh, those will be different. List three PCIe 8-pin connectors with an adapter included for the 4090 to 12-pin, or one 450-watt PCIe Gen 5 cable. If you don't know what that is, that is a 12-pin connector. It's different than the 30-series 12-pin connectors, and it will be sold with power supplies that are PCIe 5 ready. So uh, that's what you need to look for and uh, they are called 12 VHPWR connectors. So that's what you need. Now, the 4080 16 gigabyte lists three 8-pin connectors or one PCIe Gen 5 requirement, and the 4080 12 gigabyte drops down to two PCIe 8-pin or one 300-watt Gen 5 cable. Now, the 12 gigabyte 4080, we said we'd come back to a couple things. So not only is it cutting the memory by four gigabytes, that's the most obvious number that's going to be plastered all over the titles, you also need to be aware that it is a cut down version of the 4080 16 gigabyte card. We don't know if it's the same GPU silicon uh, or if it's physically smaller. We'll find out when we can open them. But for now, 
We know for fact that the CUDA core count dropped to 7680 from 9728. So somewhat significant reduction there uh, in a like for like comparison. Memory drops by four gigabytes, not the only change. And then frequency changes as well, where it's a little higher stock, but you have other limitations like power, where the 4080 12 gigabyte is 285 watts for the spec and the 4080 16 gigabyte is running at a higher spec of 320 watts. What that means is that there's less boosting headroom, so when you're under constrained conditions, it might not be able to push as hard or far as the 4080 16 gigabyte. So that's really key. Uh, 16 and 12, it's more than just a memory difference, and as people get into A-B comparisons of them, they will need to try their best to control for those differences, but it will be very hard to really accurately portray it um, you could do a good enough job, though, if you know what you're doing, but it's not quite as easy because they're not like for like. One note here, NVIDIA didn't make any mention of its partners in the official keynote. They have a, a photo of some partner cards on their newsroom post, but not sharing the stage at all from what we could tell, at least in the relevant part of the presentation, about the RTX 40 cards with any of its partners who remain, at least, uh, almost sends a bit of a message. We're not sure if it's an intentional message or an unintentional message, but given the backdrop of EVGA dropping NVIDIA right now, uh, the only model on display is the FE model, which maybe lends a little bit more credibility to the trying to sort of verticalize GPUs under one umbrella, but uh, they will still have partners. Perhaps NVIDIA is shifting its tone to avoid what it perceives as getting stabbed in the back in the future. If they, I mean, that's how we would imagine they'd feel about EVGA ditching them in the manner that EVGA did. So that might be where it comes from. Now, architecture, NVIDIA worked with TSMC on the 4N process node for this. So that's a new node. And TSMC is now fabbing the GPU silicon for everybody, at least at some levels. AMD, NVIDIA, and Intel are all using them. Intel theoretically has the ability to fab its own silicon at some point for GPUs, and that would be a major advantage, but right now they're all TSMC. Finally, on the hardware side, NVIDIA gave some light architectural details. We will have more in the coming days, and we'll be able to publish a follow-up actually detailing the architecture properly, but just to give you some key phrases that you're gonna be hearing, uh, NVIDIA noted that it has a change called SER, which we're gonna get into. It said, quote, uh, this is as big an innovation as out-of-order execution was for CPUs. Th huge words. Massive claims for that, out-of-order execution, made modern CPUs what they are today. Also introduced all of the security vulnerabilities we've had the last few years. So hopefully it's not as big an innovation for attack vectors. But uh, that is a big part of out-of-order execution on CPUs. Uh, this is shader execution reordering. So that's SER. It is what NVIDIA's CEO says will work in real time to speed up ray tracing by up to two to three times. Not 100% clear right now if that is isolated to specific uh, parts of processing ray tracing or if you'll actually see a two to three X improvement sort of generationally card to card in actualized frame rate as opposed to just like this aspect of whatever uh, intersection calculation or something has been improved. So that's, you know, there's gonna be a lot of, we're gonna look at it in this video today. Shader execution reordering works by reallocating GP resources better and uh, by rescheduling workloads in real time live. And we're gonna hear more about that in NVIDIA's editor's day and uh, in its white papers from its engineers and technical people. Now, the company also announced opacity micro map engines and it says this is for ray tracing geometry processing improvement. Uh, they also talked about tensor cores, so the RTX 40 series ADA GPUs are getting Hopper FP8 uh, engines, and Hopper is the previous, most recent architecture, did not make it to gaming, but a piece of it is coming into the 40 series. That was more of a data center science card. For DLSS3, that was one of the biggest announcements here. DLSS3 is generating entirely new frames now instead of basically enhancing existing pixels. So this is a huge change because canonically in the rendering pipeline, what NVIDIA is doing is breaking out of it and eliminating, as far as they're saying right now, the game itself or the game engine from being a part of that redrawing process. That is potentially huge if it works as it's being marketed because what that would mean is that if you have a CPU bottleneck or a GPU bottleneck, you could theoretically resolve both 
with DLSS3, either one of them, not just GPU bottlenecks now. This is using what NVIDIA calls an optical flow accelerator to feed the neural network and ADA GPUs will be able to render higher frame rate than the CPU may be able to actually compute from the game on its own, especially in those bound scenarios, again, like physics simulation. Off the back of this, NVIDIA claims a 16x increase in four years with the help of artificial intelligence for processing. 16x increase is caveated with DLSS 3. So it's not just GPU today versus GPU four years ago is 16 times better. It's under that specific condition. Uh, so anyway, wrapping up here, power efficiency is one thing, yes, and they are claiming the best performance per watt they've ever had. Every company does this every generation. That doesn't change power utilization, nor does it change transient spikes. So just because the power efficiency, the performance per watt, FPS per watt, however you want to calculate it, is good, does not mean that there won't be huge transient spikes uh, or rephrased and not as a multiple negative. It means that transient spikes will still be a thing. And at 450 watts base power for a 4090, they, if they're looking at the same two to two and a half X transients as previously, that's going to be a lot for a power supply to handle. We will be testing that in our reviews. It's going to be a key aspect of our reviews this time is transient spike analysis for the 40 series. As for the RTX 40 series FE card itself, we've shown some B-roll at this point from NVIDIA's official page of a 40 series card, and they're pretty huge. So the 4090 was the one that they installed. It looks like it's very nearly a four slot card. It's at least in that three range. And we have seen some partner models in the four to five slot range. Uh, some of which will sadly never come to fruition. So that's it for this one. We have a lot to work on now. So I'm gonna go work on that. There's a lot of architecture to dig through, white papers to understand and try to get a grasp on the architectural changes. We will bring it all to you uh, in an independent and compressed fashion. So thank you for watching as always, subscribe for more. Go to store.gamersnexus.net to help us out directly, like by grabbing one of our new media mod mats, which are in stock and shipping now. And we'll see you all next time.